Kevin G, we call him. Yeah. Now. So, how, a friend, or does he? Yeah, well, yes. we, we have differing views. The thing I respect about Kevin is, is that, that same thing I talked about earlier. You know, he's pretty, I mean, he feels pretty strongly about some things. He sends me a lot of information, but oh. we've never, he's never, ever gotten nasty, you know. Now, he, he thinks sometimes I'm, I'm a little stupid that I haven't followed, but he never calls me names either. And, and even on emails, and we've done more emails, but and at, our, at these town halls where he could be vocal, he has me, he's asked some tough questions, but he's never done carried away. And I, I've told him that before, I respect him for that, even though we may have different political views on, on, on some things. So. Well, I sent you an email, all three of the commissioners plus Danny. Uh, so. I got a couple of responses back, so uh, immediately, I think it was within hours, so I was really pleased. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I live here in Jacksonville, and uh, the Woodlands Association has a MOU with the county on the five acres that's remaining of their ten acres up here, parts. So we work with the county on, I don't know if you knew that, our trailhead is on county land. Up the upper parking lot of Britt. Okay. And uh, the county has just been really nice about allowing us to use it and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't gotten them out to very many meetings because they only have five acres and Britt Park is part of that. So we only use about an acre and a half, two acres of it. But anyway, that's a very, very important part of our trail system here is to have the county involved. So we have the county BLM, City of Jacksonville, and then the Woodlands Association runs the whole thing. So we're very interested in the history and so on. And I'm glad that the four properties finally flowed to the city because I think they're doing a, they've got some interest in it. But we've got the feeling that the county just isn't that interested in Jacksonville. Take a look at the U.S. Hotel, and that's what I came okay. about. Okay, I think I think I respond. Now I remember the, I think I, think I was one of the responses. Well, yeah, I got several emails back. Let's see who this one came from. Uh, well, Theresa Spradling. She's our uh, assistant. Uh, she's our contract manager. Okay, mm -hmm. and she was the one that I have to print off. There were several others, but mm -hmm. and then I got one from um, Rob over at the um, Historical Society because the U.S. Hotel is a it's a disgrace right now. Things are falling off of it. If you look at the um, balcony. Mm -hmm. There's a there's some stuff on the end. It's uh, supposed to support the water that comes off it, but it's actually hanging down about 18 inches on one end. And it's going to fall on somebody. And for the last 40 years, the um, where the water comes out on the Beekman Bank side, that, wa that pipe is leaked and it's washing out the brick all the way down almost 30 feet of just wash coming down there. And uh, so I started investigating and I found out that um, the historical society, or the, uh, the city, or I mean, excuse me, the county, gets $1,900 $1, a month rent off of the U.S. hotel. From U.S. From I US mean, U.S. Bank, bank part US bank. of the U.S. hotel. So that's 20, over, almost $23,000 a year that they get off of that. And then the uh, Historical Society renting out the upstairs and the trolley stop and teeps. Um, they get $22,000 rent, but then they have, to, out of that, they pay for utilities and all the other stuff. So Rob says they have a net of uh, a little over $11,000. And I asked, where does that money go? And he says, well, it goes in the operation of the Historical Society. So I asked the county, where does that $22,800 go It's what you've been receiving it for close to 40 years? What, what happens to it? And she answered back and said it goes into building maintenance. Building maintenance. But where? If you're not putting a cent into this building, at least from what I can see, can you? Sure, I'd be glad to answer that. First of all, to your first point, do you think the county is you know, abandoned or has no interest uh -huh. in Jacksonville? Let's address that issue okay. first. Okay. Well, I mean, obviously, the history of, of Jackson County government starts right here. Well, I know. The courthouse. Uh, so, yes, absolutely. Uh, one of the reasons, uh, uh, well, let's just, let me 
did, did Rob, do you understand the, the, the uh, symbiotic relationship between oh, Southern Oregon Historical Society yeah. and, and Yeah, Jersey he explains County? it in here that they rent from you for a dollar a year. Yeah. And they get to collect whatever rent they collect, and it goes into their operational, basically into the organization. So what and, I mean, though, they, they go, even even if I may excuse me for interrupting, but I'm just trying a little. But you have, you, they have a long. Uh, so the lease old the other buildings that, that that we deeded over mm -hmm. to the city of Jacksonville, that was all part of that. Uh, this goes way back uh, to the 50s, and when the Southern Oregon Historical Society started. And what the deal was then is that the county had an arrangement with the, with SOHS for those buildings. We rented them for, for nothing, a dollar. One of the caveats, so on the lease, was is they were responsible to ma maintain the buildings because they were an asset to the citizens of Jackson County. Mm -hmm. That meant all of them. That meant all the, the, the five structures. U.S. Hotel was unique in that, in, in that, and I'm not exactly sure. I don't understand the exact details, but U.S. Hotel was a little bit unique from uh, the Bigman Bank, uh, the, the house up on the hill, the old rectory, mm -hmm. the Catholic rectory, uh, and the, the Beekman uh, House, the Beekman Bank. Yeah, pardon me. Yes, and uh, so anyway, so as as a historical society's funding's kind of started to dry up mm -hmm. a little bit. Kind of. Okay, okay, well I'm being kind. Yeah. Uh, the, the, um, they could not maintain, and, the, and, and in the lease, in that, the lease is that it states uh, uh, very clearly is that uh, the maintenance of those buildings or the responsibility of Southern American Southern Historical Society. And through these last several years that just wasn't being done. So the county started doing some of that. So the so county has worked on the building? On the, all the buildings to a certain amount, and then we turned around okay. and banked that. Southern Oregon SOHS couldn't afford to pay us, so we just banked that. So over the years, it's ended up being about $400,000. So of the five, working on the five buildings? You yes. You spent that yeah. much? Yeah, $400,000. Really? So we weren't going to get that, so what we, then we signed another lease with Southern Oregon Historical Society. We said to them, why don't we sell the U.S. Hotel? That's the most marketable piece of property out of the five buildings. Mm -hmm. Okay, so why don't we sell that? Well, okay, they were saying well, we could use the money as well. We told them they could sell it for anything they wanted. All we wanted was our $400,000 back. So. You could sell it, and I think they, they, they originally put it on the market for like a million five or something like that. They expected maybe net out a million dollars after they paid the county a million plus. They borrowed some money from Alan DeBoer mm -hmm. in the process through this or the Southern Oregon Society. He, he underwrote uh, much of what they've done. So, so that, that, that's the agreement, that's the agreement that, that stands today. We, we've talked to them about uh, the, uh, the maintenance on the on the U.S. Hotel, we're, we're aware of that. That's something they're supposed to take care of. Okay. So we have been in conversation with them about nobody's jumping up. Of course, we've been through the Great Recession, but nobody's jumping up and saying, "Yeah, I want to buy this building." Mm -hmm. So we have su suggested that they may want to lower the asking price on the. They're hoping still to get the million dollars, so they're saying, well, okay, but then will you take your lesser amount? No, we want the money back. When I say we, I'm using that, obviously, mm -hmm. as, as, a, as a speaking for the county. We want that. We want to pay back our taxpayers for that amount of money. So if you sell it for 500000 that's fine. We'll take the four hundred. dollars you get 100000 So that's... Mr. There. Mr. How are you, sir? Very well. So that's, how, that's, that's where that stands right now. But you get over twenty-two thousand yeah. a year off the rent of the bank. Of the U.S. Bank, yeah. Mm -hmm. Why couldn't that go towards some of that? I, I, that just seems to be kind of lost in. No, well, that was part of the original agreement. That's yeah. that's the reason that was set aside. <clears throat> that's money. That's that's income that comes into the account. Like I say, it goes into the building maintenance fund. We maintain a numerous number of buildings throughout mm -hmm. the county. And but it, it, none of it is really marketed no, toward the... None of, them, none of it's line item for 
Jacksonville Hotel. It just it goes into that pot, that building, that building maintenance pot, and all the buildings, whether it be whether it be central uh, expenses or all goes into that pot. I mean every every department pays into that pot. If they're if they're if they're in the in a group of buildings, county buildings, part of their fund money goes to pay into that. So everybody pays into that big pot. So that's where we're at with the with the U.S. Hotel. The so-called his, historic tax that was voted on back, what, 1947, 48, that still brings in a stream of money. That's, well, I know it's been folded in, but that tax base or rate is still bringing money into the county. Yeah, Measure 50 uh, really was the, I mean, the voters voted that in. But it just meant, it just said that that, that all folds in into that $2.01 that we can charge as for the county. Uh -huh. When you get your bill from the county, your, your property tax bill, and you look at this and you're paying, I don't know what you're paying, none of my business. But of that, only $2 and one penny goes to Jackson County itself. Part of that was of that also, so there was some library money as well that went into that. Right that was Measure 50, said you could roll it all in. And, and what <clears throat> the intent of the, of the legislation was then <clears throat> is to set, it was in response to the ever increasing property tax bill that were going on. It was kind of a little bit of a shadow measure, or what do they call them in California, Proposition 13, about putting some sort of cap on, on property taxes because they were going crazy. That was that was measure, that measure 50, that, or actually measure five way back when, but 50 is kind of the grandchild of measure five. So what they said is, is, is counties, the state legislature did this, take any money that you have coming in whether it be from timber, makes no difference, which includes all special districts, okay? Take all that money and then now. So here's your pot of revenue. Now, what is your pot of expenses? And we would, we, we, we gave them the expenses. We didn't have anything, this was done up, in, up north. So they said, okay, then, $2.01 in Jackson County ought to be about the right number. Josephine County at 58 cents same formulas, it's, everything was the same, but they were receiving quite a bit more money from federal timber back when ONC was working, okay? And they had a lot less expenses. Same way with Curry County. Now you get up to Portland, that's almost $6 yeah. per thousand. There's no, no timber money or such. So, so, that's, so I'm just trying to explain to you where that money, people say, well, gee, you stole that money from the, from the SOHS or the libraries or et cetera. Now, we didn't do anything. We just did what the legislature gave us, told us to do. But if the uh, historic fund hadn't been there, would, would the two dollars and something be down lower? It would have been less revenue coming out of there, so who knows, it might have been more. I, I, I don't know, that was way before my time. I just know how the formula worked. Okay. Because people wonder, well, how come, how come counties have such different uh, property rates? And I'm, I'm talking just about the county now. I'm not talking about all the other everything else that we pay on our on our on our November tax bill. I'm just talking about what the county gets, and that was a formula. And it's very. I, don't, I think I might have a chart on that. What that? Yeah, I think anyway, so that that's. Uh, This has to do with uh, with uh, federal acres, so no, that was not. It's another chart. So anyway, that's okay. that's where that comes from. So the county's kind of locked out of doing any maintenance work on the building because the historical society's responsibility is to take care of the building. We could, and we have a little bit in the past because, after all, that's still a county asset. I know. Okay, so we have done some of that in the past. In fact, there at the Beekman Bank there, about five years ago, there was something major, I don't know if the roof or something like that, the county went in and did that. Uh, so we, we don't want to see that completely disintegrate, so we have zero value in the asset. But it's really, really our only leverage, if you will, with SOHS as to get off the diet and, and, and let's get this building sold. They, don't, they, they can't afford it. 
and we can't, we, we don't want it. But we're not going to give up that revenue because we've got it as part of our revenue stream. You know, like I say, so you understand, so I'm talking as a business person now. Yeah, I, I just can't quite understand why that rent you're getting from the U.S. bank couldn't go. I know it, it gets put out through your 500 buildings, but that money is being generated here in Jacksonville, and that, that hotel is suffering really bad to a point where there's some safety issues. People can't even walk out on that uh, historic, well, it's not I don't really think they can go out on the balcony. No, they can't go out on the balcony anymore, and there are things going to be dropping off of it. If you look at it, it's, it's unsafe. And, uh, I just want to address your point of why you're like, you know, why, why money's being generated in Jacksonville, why doesn't it spend in Jacksonville? I understand the reason behind it. Okay, I'm so I'm going to say, what point. about the stuff that we're maintaining in White City? I'm so we take that money and put it in Jacksonville? Yeah, I know, but uh, it's one of the most historic buildings in the whole valley, and it's suffering really bad. Well, that's the way I felt about the courthouse. Yeah. The courthouse was kept up pretty, in pretty good shape. They, the historical society got some good grants over the years and uh, kept it up with the rest of the building. Well, then the Oslo, or the Ashlands went in and did quite a bit of work here just recently, so. At, at so the courthouse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Talk about an asset to this, this valley, they're really something. The Ashlands, Mel yeah. Ashland, yeah, absolutely. I had all three of their kids in my fifth grade class. Oh. So I know Matt, Eric, and you know me very well. Yeah, they so that may not be a satisfactory answer to your question, but that's the answer. But you could do more if it becomes a super safety issue or something. I mean, yeah, I mean, it gets, you're, you're exactly right. You can always condemn the building. Pardon me? You can always condemn the building. Yeah, we could, but we don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. You're right. That would be unfortunate. Yeah, yeah we, don't, we don't want to do that. Is either. the title clear on it? Title's clear. Yes. Uh, because I mean, when I first moved here, there was a controversy over who actually owned it. Yeah, yeah, well, that's been cleared up. Has it? <laughs> that, we had to go through that whole thing with the other four buildings. Okay. We gave it to the city of Jacksonville. Yeah, because there were some, like uh, Robbie Collins, when he gave the uh, rectory, there was a stipulation on the, uh, in the deed that it could never be well, sold. Well, yes, no, there are some of those things. You're exactly right. That's, that stipulated what, what those buildings could be used for. Mm -hmm. Now, the Ashland Hotel, or Ashland Hotel, the uh, U.S. Hotel, the, uh, the house out of the Beekman Place, uh, what's the other house out there? What's the other part well, of your family? The, well, the rectory and the uh, no, Beekman one. House and there's, the Beekman Bank. I thought there's one. Anyway, there, there is no, there's no uh, encumbrances on those as far as what they can or cannot be used for. Same way with the U.S. Hotel. Now, the, the Beekman Bank, it was a really, that was really cloudy as to who actually ended up with that because the artifacts were supposed to go one place. The yeah, we went all through that. The Historical Society, uh, Oregon Historical Society was involved in it. Mm -hmm. So the county ended up with a clear title on the thing. Okay. But they're still not sure about the artifacts. No, no. <laughs> not really all we care about is the building. But it's not ours, we don't. Mm -hmm. We have nothing. And I just want to address that too for a second. That. Uh, when we started negotiating with the city of Jacksonville on that, uh, it, we've been accused of, well, gee whiz, the county is a sweet deal for the county because we got out of it. So because it was a maintenance, going to be a, the, those buildings were going to be a maintenance nightmare, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we could have, because the titles were clear, we could have sold those, including the courthouse. The courthouse. But Jack Walker stepped in it when he said, on several occasions, let's just sell the buildings. Who needs history? Who needs that I musty? That, that was old that was that was stuff. years before. That was, I know, that was but years still, before. That, that was years before. That set the tone, you know. When well, he said didn't that set musty the tone. Old stuff. Didn't, didn't set the tone to the current board of commissioners. Yeah, I know. Okay. <laughs> There. Okay. And but people remember my, my point. Those comments. Well, yeah, unfortunately, we we remember some of the negative things and, mm -hmm. and forget the positive things. I'm just saying that we that is a that is a legal reality. Mm -hmm. The county very well could have those are assets to the to the taxpayers of Jackson County. We could have sold those. Now who would have bought them? I'm not sure, but we could have. Instead, we said here, 
City of Jacksonville, here, here you are. Yes, did that relieve us of maintenance? Absolutely, I, I don't duck that issue. But it also gave some, some valuable. The City of Jacksonville can do that. There, there's no, no restrictions put on they can They could do whatever they want to with, the, with those buildings. Well, see, all of our properties, our 21 properties that we have around Jacksonville for the Woodland Association that has three ownerships, uh, almost all the properties have a deed restriction that can ever be sold. Yeah, well, we, we got that on there immediately, so we preserve it. So, uh, yeah, people could change their minds then. But what do you find the most challenging thing with your job? You get 22 of these town meetings and uh, people coming in front of you every week. What, what do you find the most challenging part? I think I, I, I wasn't so naive coming into this job uh, since I've been involved in, in the area for a long period of time. However, I was naive to the fact that uh, the difficulty to get things moved done, in many cases because, because of, of the administrative, and I'm not talking about local, I'm talking about the administrative quagmire that's involved in working through government. And that's all the way from the top to the bottom. And so you just don't decide, you know, we ought to do this. This is the right thing to do, whatever that thing is. Mm -hmm. Okay, you just don't go out and do it. You know, so you come up with an idea. You could take time to even get it to discuss it, uh, to get to act on it with public meeting law. And I'm not against public meeting laws at all. I'm, I understand the whole intent and the reason for that, uh, and adhered strictly to that. But it's just that's probably been the thing that that. I've disliked most about my experience. Other than that, it's been a great experience. I wish I was a little younger, I would have tried to for a second term, but I promised my wife I would tell me 73 when I'm out. And after 48 years, it'll be 49 years then, and we want to do some things with ourselves for ourselves, because who knows, there are no guarantees. Yeah. So it's been it's been a great even 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 when I get uh, shots uh, from across the bow, uh, I, I, it, I I don't react. That's, that's public right, as long as you don't get personal. I said that when I began with, that's the thing that, that I, I draw a line there. But other than that. What, do you find, uh, uh, might somebody else ask a question? Yeah, yeah. Hey. Mr. Commissioner, Mr. What, wasn't that long ago you had a 34 million uh, legible to close? Somehow you managed to do it. It seems like things are maybe improving a little bit. Could you talk just a little better about our budget going into fiscal year? Sure, 2015? sure. And we're, it's something I'm concerned about is, you know, well, we never had we never we, we never had a 34 million dollar deficit. We had we had at anywhere between a six to a 10 million dollar deficit. Yeah, 34 we never had 34 million. million. Fall on projected revenues about three years. Ago. Not since I've been aboard. No, we've never had that big. We've never had that big a deficit. Not a deficit. Our, our a drop. You, you may have. Oh made it up. yes, you your had, revenues you dropped. Had, I'm sorry. You I thought you were okay. Million dollar I misunderstood your question. Not a okay. deficit. Okay. Oh yeah. So yeah, you had absolutely. Absolutely. million dollars less come in than you expected in your bank. Yes. Fiscal well, year. from 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 where it was in its peak in 2006, or actually even before that, when ONC was was really kicking in the big ducks, 19 19 million dollars a year. At one time, we used to receive from ONC. You know, we received seven million dollars at the max, and a good portion of that's tied up in Title II or Title III money. So we really received uh, this last uh, authorization, reauthorization, one-year reauthorization, about three point five million. But nevertheless, so that that was that. You had to re you had to reshuffle the cards. We had to reshuffle the cards. So that's exactly right. Uh, we had uh, our investment income dropped. We're still outperforming. Proud to prove it. Proud to report that Jackson County has the best return on its investment of any county in the state of Oregon. Just report just came out, Secretary of State, which isn't much. It's only 1.7. <laughs> but public monies, you can get. There's there's strict rules on what you can do with that as far as investments. The average is about one one percent. So anyway, so anyway, that dropped considerably. Property taxes went flat or less. Um, Fees to the development, you, you would be aware of this, dropped precipitously. Fees to the county clerk, because people weren't filing stuff for deeds and so on and so forth, that dropped precipitously. So all these little red income streams were just the big one being the, the from the federal government. I mean, I, I 
just be honest. Most governments, local governments, operate you know as a as a, a, a funnel for the money that comes from Washington or, or Salem. Anyway, that was a, that was that was a difference that goes from or where it was in 2006, even out of Dalton Gold, because the, the last time the county received 19 million dollars from ONC was in the late 70s or very early 80s. I think it was in the 70s. In fact, I know it was because I talked to a county commissioner a year ago who was commissioner at that time, and, and he was he was uh, joking with me. He says, "Boy, I couldn't be a commissioner now." He says, "Back." In the 70s, he says, we had, it was embarrassing how much money. In fact, at one time, the county didn't collect any property taxes. There was two years where they didn't collect any property taxes because they had so much money rolling in. Those days are long gone. So my point being is, so okay, so what happened all of a sudden? We went from the, sh the shrinkage, and then got down to our budget two years ago, that we were at the point of, in, in keeping the libraries open and keeping, and I'm talking about our discretionary dollars out of our general fund, we were going to be spending in deficit of right about six million dollars, a little over six million, six point eight million dollars. Now by in deficit, I don't mean we were borrowing or anything for that. We were taking out of reserves on an annual basis about close, what's this called, seven million dollars. That was in 2011, 2011, 2012. 2012, 2013, 2013, 2014, we started seeing a pickup. We got the reauthorization on secure rural schools, which is supposed to take place of the, of the ONC, plus our PILT money, which is payment in lieu of taxes, federal uh, program that's nationwide. Uh, that increased, uh, and we started seeing an uptick and those other revenue streams. So we were able this year, for example, is that from our, when we did the budget and when we dropped, adopted the budget in June of this year, or 14, 15, is that we saw an increase, an unexpected increase in our income of almost $10 million. That's pretty good. So what we're doing there, so instead of spending $7 million in deficit, okay, we're gonna be to the plus a couple million dollars, and that'll go right back into the reserve fund. A lot of that is because of some very innovative things that uh, the county has done, and I'll be real honest, it's because of some very innovative thinking of our county administrator. Uh, the county doesn't do anything for free. I just mean, you know, we're, we're, we're running it like a business, and uh, wherever there's an opportunity, raise taxes, I'm not talking about that. In fact, all the things that have gone on, and I want to just brag, and I'm not for anything for me, but consider, and again, this I think would be very important to you, through the last six years, the county has spent a lot of money on building projects within Jackson County, starting with the 9-11 Center, you know, which is not part of the county, it's a 9-11 emergency services, it's countywide service, but we built the building. Uh, we built the new sheriff's office, whether you think that, or remodel out there. Where did that money come from? That's, that came out of our, 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 our reserve fund. It did? Yes, yeah. Um, whether, whatever you think of HHS, the new health and services building. How, how did that think it's so ugly? <laughs> it is. It is. I agree with you 100%. I have nothing to do with it, but I'm not saying that anyway. I, I, it's on my watch, so anyway, it is ugly. I, can, I said we ought to just plant one by uh, specimen sequoia trees and get them in the ground as soon as well, we like can. Well, like Mrs. Ashland once said, if a building is ugly, just put a big tree in front of it. <laughs> well, that's exactly. I did, I'm did. i getting off on track here for a second. I'll come back. I'll get on track. But uh, I was kind of hoping, if you remember when Transamerica built the pyramid in San Francisco, their, their headquarters building, oh, the outcries within the city was, it was unbelievable. What an ugly, this is not, this is not San Francisco, we're the bay window, we're the, you know, this city, on the, you know, all this blah, 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 blah. Now, 30 some years later, it's an icon. It's when, they show, when they show pictures of San Francisco, they show either the Golden Gate or the Transamerica building. It because up immediately. On, yeah, it showed up on, several years ago, it showed up on the front page of our, or in the front cover of our fifth grade math book. Sticking up out of the clouds. Is that right? So here's what the, the connection there is. is that my hope is, oh, is oh, 20, I see. 20 years from now, 
that building it because it's so ugly will be gone. <laughs> anyway, so so one thing I said that I think that well I think I know that uh, we're very pleased with is that we have done all of these building projects without we could have gone for fees. Government has in the state of Oregon. I told you we can't raise our fees. It takes the vote. If, if Jackson County wanted to raise its property taxes, besides the three percent that's 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 mandated, uh, we couldn't do it unless the other thirty-five counties in Oregon said we could. Well, that's in the Constitution. That's what Measure Fifty did. Is it set the fees, and the only way those fees can ever be changed is by the vote of Oregon. Not, not just Jackson County. So we got two dollars and one cent, which really, quite honestly, just about pays for our public safety. We get about thirty-three million dollars on property taxes on an annual basis. Uh, our uh, our uh, public safety that includes the sheriff, includes the district attorney, that includes uh, juvenile corrections, and our transitional center and and uh, community justice, to the tune of about twenty-eight million, a little over twenty-eight million. So that eats up most of that. But anyway, but we could, and you see it happen in the city of Medford, I'm not throwing them under the bus, as a bus but I'm using them as an example, is that we could just apply fees. We'd call them utility fees. Jacksonville does that. I agree with you. Okay. Jacksonville does that. So and again, I'm not throwing it. But we, we, in this Board of Commissioners and the previous Board of Commissioners as well, so that's, that's I actually floated that idea. Let me real up front. I floated that idea. I remember trying to save the libraries. I was trying to save the libraries. I was just trying to figure out because I didn't figure there was any way that library. that would ever get passed. You know, the voters would never pass that. And so I thought, well, if they really want to, we do that. Well, anyway, that went nowhere. So, and because of, of the over the, and the objections of one commissioner in particular, Commissioner Rasher, was adamantly opposed to doing that. He convinced me anyway, so we didn't do that. The point being is, is, the citizens of Jackson County, from county taxes, haven't paid one penny more for all the improvements that's gone on. So I think that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Now, across from the uh, voting center and the probation center, there was a church there. Right. First Assembly of God. Um, the county bought that. Mm -hmm. Uh, what was the plan? Uh, where'd that money come from and what was the plan? It came from the reserve. It came from yeah. the reserve. And, and let me explain to you something real quickly, if you don't mind. The, our budget is developed by our budget committee, which is made up of the three budget, or the three county commissioners and three lay people. Now those lay people are appointed by the board of commissioners, so people say, well, that's all I'm going for. I got to tell you, Kevin's been there, that's not a good old boy. Thank you. Uh, it's a pretty robust conversation with the lay people. Uh, so anyway, uh, they're the ones to so determine on, on our general budget. Uh, the Board of Commissioners have, have a small amount of leeway to spend some money as long as we don't exceed the general budget. Uh, but anyway, so the idea for that, the reason for doing that is we thought at some time, if we ever wanted to expand that building, the old Safeway building there, uh, and uh, we would need more parking. Oh, it was parking that was mostly driving that. Yeah, so that, that was, that was, that was the, the, the purpose for that. That property has come up again under one of the things we'd like to see done, will come on my watch, was we, we really didn't desperately need for a new district attorney's office. That's an old insurance building over there on 6th Street. The one that got on bombed. 10th Street. The one that got yeah, bombed. Yeah, the one that got bombed, yeah. Not I much mean, security it, there, is there? It, well, there's no security, but there is no, I mean, it's, if you've ever been into it, it's just a, uh, a bunch of cubicles in there and the attorneys and the DAs. Anyway, so we thought, well, maybe, mm. maybe this uh, that might be a good place to do that. The problem is, is the courthouse is over here, and I'm talking about the justice building where our courts are, mm -hmm. and, the, and having the DA's oh. office over over there. We thought, so if you know where our DA, DA, DA's office is now on 10th Street, mm -hmm. there's a parking lot that the county had to build, the city code said if you're going to build, or if you're going to remodel the, those at insurance building and make a DA's office, when we go through our permits and get for me, then you have to have X amount of parking spaces. So we had well, to, That's where the parking is for that building. Nobody ever parks there. You know, if you never see anybody park there. But oh. it was a requirement, a building requirement, city of Medford. We have to follow the rules like anybody else. So 
that's probably what we'd like to do is we'd like to build a new DA's office there, tear down the old entrance and make that a parking spot. Oh, so just flip them, but make a building that really makes sense for the, for the district attorney. The other thing, um, while we're talking about buildings, is the other thing that will probably happen much sooner, and that's a, a justice court. Right now, we lease a building from Dennis Richardson in Central Point. State law says that a county, a, the, a district, or a, uh, a uh, justice court cannot be located in the same city as the county seat. I don't know why that is, but that's what it says. So what it means is we can't have justice court in Bedford. That's the reason why it's in Central Point right now. Uh, Dennis is, you know, retired, running for governor. Uh, he's kind of in, getting interested in getting rid of his buildings and such. So um, we've looked around and bought a piece of property in Central Point over off of Biddle Road, Biddle and Hamrick uh, Road over there. And um, we're looking at proposals for uh, to build a small justice court over there. So that, that's our building projects. And that's coming again out of that reserve fund? Oh, comes out, yeah, exactly right. And, and on the reserve fund too, let me explain something. And this is, the governmental budgeting is so unlike the private sector. That's what we talk about frustrations. I always consider myself a really good budget person. Uh, in fact, I like it. It's one of the few people that, I mean, anyway, I really enjoy it. <laughs> Government budgeting, budgeting is so much different. I mean, it, it, the rules and such is just incredible. So, but I'm saying that only because, let's go to the Health and Human Services building, or we could go to the Sheriff's Office either way. Doesn't make any difference, any of the places. But Health and Human Services would be a good, good example. That building is gonna cost us, with a parking structure, somewhere around $35 million. But the price has doubled since you started it, hasn't it? Well, no, not necessarily. Well, it's gone up a little bit because we've added square footage. Per square foot, it's still in the budget. And we had a, and we put on two more stories on the parking structure. So, you tore anyway. Down, tore down an existing building. We tore down the old federal building. That was the old idea originally, was to remodel that building uh -huh. and leave it there. Well, once it was a CMNG, uh, uh, Construction Management uh, General Contractor, request for proposals, and the, the general contractor and the architect, after looking at it, said, you know what, we can build you a better building for less money, by tear, and tear down this old building, because this building is retrofit, wasn't even close to seismic four conditions, which is mm -hmm. the location we're in, the area we live in. We said, okay, let's take a look at that. So that's why that, so that's the reason why the building came down, this building, whether you like it or not, I will tell you the inside, is really well laid out. The outside is ugly. I, I absolutely agree with that. But nevertheless, how that building is being paid for, again, this is government. Um, when, when we have dedicated dollars coming to health and human services for either public health, mental health, whatever those, those services that health and human services provides, most of that money is all federal money. Some of it comes from the state. But that's more for operation, isn't it? it no, it can be, it, it's, it is for, it's for specific programs, dedicated dollars. It says, let's just say, here's a million dollars. For that million dollars, you're expected to do this. But you have to have a building to do that. Well, yeah, but let me get to this with more of where I'm trying to go with this. This is what you got to do. Here's a million dollars. We expect this. We expect outcomes. Okay, so if you're efficient, so we say, okay, we take the million dollar grant. Again, there are measurable outcomes that you have to meet. And if we can do it at less money, the money we save out of that million dollars, we don't send it back to the, to the federal government. Oh. We can put it in the, uh, uh, I find this one blank, into the, their fund balance, their health and human, health and human services uh, fund balance. Do they hold on to it? That department holds on to it. I mean, that's what it's, it can't be spent for anything else, but it's money, it's kind of like, extra money, discretionary money in a way, but it's gotta stay, it's gotta be spent in that health and human services. So, and they have done that over the last several years. So they've got, they've built a huge, uh, uh, um, is there a hard time? my mind's going goofy, fund anyway. So what they're doing, so they're paying for the lion's share of that building, 
out of theirs because we can do that. And here's a case where you're taking dedicated dollars and we're going to turn them into general fund dollars. And how we're doing that is, again, this is innovative. We're going to build the building with our dedicated dollars. Then we're going to turn around and lease the building back to the state. I don't know. <laughs> it's going to be owned by the county? So it'll be owned by the county. The county being county employees in it will be doing exactly what we're doing right now. I think the state will pay us for that. So it's kind of a perpetual the money, but that money will not have to go into their fund balance. That becomes general fund dollars. It's, it's a very convoluted and, and, uh, and confusing pr pr process, but it works. So, and that's why I said earlier, where we've done several things like that in the county, where we take dedicated dollars, we do what we're supposed to do with that, we generate some general fund dollars that goes into general funds. So that's one reason why we have the second largest fund balance in the state of Oregon, so I feel really good about that. But the old buildings up on East Main? On East Main, we'll either sell those or lease them. Uh, we would like to, because we don't need the money immediately, of course it's going to take a while to sell those, but nevertheless, I'd rather lease, this is just makes, for me, business sense, I'd rather have long-term revenue mm -hmm. than short-term revenue if you don't need it. So that's what, that's, that's the plan, uh, is to try to lease those buildings out. The only problem I have with that, and I'll be real honest with that, is I hate competing against the private sector. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're doing. So we've had some discussions about that, but uh, anyway, that's that's what those buildings are. That probably took us way off track. I no, this is very interesting. I heard. <coughs> but that's kind of the ways we. Well, yeah, I mean, what what I was interested in is hearing you talk about. You know, I, I knew I knew where we've been through. You know, twelve and into thirteen, and now we're pretty much most of the way through fourteen, and then you've already mentioned fifteen. 14, so, 15. Uh -huh. So what I what I think I see is I think I see these budgeting uh, techniques that you've been using the last couple of years actually starting to get you a little bit of altitude and airspeed. You're exactly right. That's that's exactly right. And and you have to be careful. You you can't do uh, when you, when you do the budget. Well, I'll take it back to my private. I used to do the budgets for for. Don't can, LTM. I interrupt can I interrupt you for just a minute? Sure. I was at a meeting, a, a town hall meeting that you had here a couple of years ago, and at the time mm -hmm. our county budget was, if I remember, I think it's our county budget was about three hundred and fifty million. Yeah. And and it's it's less than that. Three oh six. Yeah. Three oh eight. That's a big difference. A difference, yeah. Uh, and a lot of that is uh, dedicated funds. Out of that three hundred plus, whether it's three hundred eight or three hundred and fifty, I don't think it was ever quite three fifty, but it was it was close to that. Okay. Yeah, somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Recognize that out of that, two thirds of that money is dedicated. We we did, we're, we're a funnel, but those departments, if, they, if they're smart with their money, then that goes in that fund balance. But we don't have a chance. So that so when people say, "What well, is? We well, got three hundred ten million dollars. You've got all kinds of money you can spend, you do all kinds of things." Yeah, we have money, but those most of that money, two thirds of that money, is all dedicated, and it has to go to whatever that money comes from, whether it comes from D.C. or comes from Salem. So we're, we have a very small plot of money. The Budget Committee has a very, relatively, if you can talk about millions being small, but <laughs> uh, a small amount of money to play with. If you will, play is probably the wrong choice of words, but to use. Well, one of the things that, that we're interested in, you know, libraries and uh, the county, uh, isn't the county going to be in a position here in a couple of years where they'll actually be able to do something with these? Like there's a, isn't there a bond or something? The libraries? In, 20, in 2020, the library bonds will be paid off. Be paid now, off. we may get into a position like we did out of White City uh, where things were going better, so we paid off early. You know, we had it in our bond, uh, our bond sale that we could, buy, we, could buy, we could pay off early. We have that with the, with the library bonds as well. Is that money coming out of the new tax district? No, no, no. That's separate. That money we're, we're getting, we're that's, getting. That's that's, that's part. Right. That's in our. That's in our. Uh, that's in your bill. That the voters passed in 2000. So, so the bonds are, are the county's responsibility then. Right, but but it's actually coming from the taxpayers. Yeah. But my point being is, if we can, if we can do better, we can take the money out of out of. Uh, Reserves and pay that bond off early if we figure it's a good deal. But 
now that it's a, its own district, we probably won't do that. Because if we did, we'd probably ask the district to make up you know, something in there. Because we'd be taking dollars that we're drawing interest on now, that big one and a half percent whopping, and we'd be getting nothing for it. But we're just talking about a lot of millions of dollars, that one percent is still a lot of money. Well, well you, won't, you won't be here when it happens, but just hypothetically, if, you know, once those bonds are satisfied, County really doesn't have any interest in owning these buildings. Exactly. The county, I, I mean, like, this this building that we're in right now. Could you see maybe the county just turning the building over to the city of Jacksonville, and then the city of Jacksonville could could, could just staff it any way they well, want. Then, well, then, rent, well, rent it back to the library district. They could, whatever. You're, but, but you're exactly right. I'll speak for the current board of commissioners. That would be our desire. But again, in 2020, it'll be up to that board of commissioners. Well, the main library is it. owned by. S by the college, it's totally county. No, they lease that space to RCC. Okay. The county leases that well. Now, that lease is, is, is well, the county's still leasing that money because it's still the county building. Okay. It will be in 2020. Yeah. The only building that's not true on is Ashland, the old original Ashland Library. Look at the stone. The kind of library. Is, is this belongs to the city of Ashland, the large annex, mm -hmm. the improvement. That belongs to the county. Everything in the library belongs to the county. Books, tables, computers, all of that belongs to the county. And that was the whole issue with working things out with the new library district. So the county owns, still owns the books? Yeah. Even when they buy, when the district buys a new book? When the, when the district buys a book, so, yeah, I mean, they'll own them. But that, those, all that material in there belonged to the, to the citizens of Jackson County. Now, since the library district is Jackson County, one can argue, well, mm. what difference does it make? But they're not under the commissioners at all, are they? No, no, they're entirely with the five uh, commissioners, I forget, directors, whatever they're calling themselves, and they're, they're absolutely responsible for all the operations of the libraries. How about the maintenance of the buildings? We've contracted with them, we being the county, have contracted them to maintain it, but they're paying us for that. Mm. So county workers mm -hmm. are working, maintaining, on, maintaining. But the money's right. coming from the district. That's basically. correct. Yeah, we're just we have we have contracts like that in other places as well. Because the county right now is supposedly responsible for up to five feet around this building. That could be it. I, yeah, that's, I was on the committee when we did that, and the city then takes over from there, but sits on city land. Yeah, and this is a, this is a unique <laughs> deal here. But this is the only place where that's except Ashland where actually the county bill on, sits on city land. So it'd be, be nice to get the county out of the library business. Oh, yeah. we're all for, I'm all for that. Yeah. The sooner that was the same way I was with the historical bill. So we're on, we, we, we one, don't need it. You know, one, of, one of the things- uh, Unless we're getting money for it. <laughs> this is uh, a non sequitur, but one of the things that uh, I'd like to hear you talk about a little bit if you can is, where are we going with our with our uh, airport, with our air, air service? What's, what's going on there that's kind of a big deal? You mean, okay, so are you talking about uh, with, uh, with commercial airlines coming in and out? Well, we, yeah, we had uh, a few years back we decided we were going to make it an international... Um, Technically, it still is. Yeah, yeah, and we had, <laughs> we had a uh, port of entry and... Uh, we, had we, had, we had that, yes, we had, a, we had a port of entry, we had the uh, uh, free trade zone. That was all the uh, quite a bit of advertising through the hard work of, uh, of Mike Merle Senior uh, to, to to get that done. The whole idea was going to be this this trade zone, and the forensic lab had a lot to do with that. The forensic lab in Ashland had a lot to do with it. They could bring specimens in, they bring them from all over the world, could land them here in Medford. Wouldn't have to pay any, do anything. You could take them to the forensic lab. So it was uh, this was before my time, but I remember being in some meetings with some other organizations on that. And it just never panned out. I mean, well, I know you've got Burn Case that's in charge in charge of all that. Yeah, he's you're, a director. You're going to kind of give us the readers' digest for you. The important, the airport's really important because a lot of the people that come and work here have uh, businesses and even homes in other places, and the airport is important to them to get you know to get here and to go back and so on and so forth. Does our, I mean, are, are we stable? Are we growing? We are. I tell you what. Uh, when Burn Case retires, which will be in the next few years, it will be a huge hole. He, I remember I told you, made the comment that we don't do anything for free. Burn doesn't do anything for free. His whole focus is on building a bigger, not necessarily bigger, 
but, but bigger, but a better airport, better airport service. And he works 24 hours a day at that. That's what he does. So he, and he comes up with innovative ideas on how to get that done. He works tough, works tough lease agreements with the, with the rental car agencies. Uh, very competitive on that. Uh, works with our tenants out there at the, at the airport. Um, works with the airlines. I mean, we'd like to have a little bit more air service. I mean, we still fly direct to six cities, which is pretty incredible uh, for an airport our size. But... Uh, is he a county employee? Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, he's a county employee. He's a uh, director. Um, but it, very stable. The FAA loves us. If I can say, I mean, honestly, they do. We're, 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 we're pretty easy, if you want to have easy right now. We get grants readily, both from, from the federal government and the FAA. We're, we're not a large community. A lot of communities our size are having trouble with staffing towers to sail in the area, yeah. to have CC, or to FAA requirements. So, but, but we're not. We're, we're, we're in not, good shape. We are in excellent shape. Absolutely excellent shape. I mean, that is a jewel. I, I, I think as I look at the, the Rogue Valley, uh, I give kudos to the city of Medford on the sports park on the, on the south end of town. That's an absolute jewel when you drive into, into Medford. Unfortunately, the rest of the town doesn't match up, but that area is gorgeous. It's a money maker. brings in tremendous money. just gets bigger and better and better and better. I count that. And our airport is, is from a capital standpoint, building, uh, that sort of thing, is our two, the two best assets here in the Rogue Valley. And the county owns the airport outright? Yes. Because county Medford, land. Medford used to own it. It's in the Medford, no, never was always been. It used to be out there in the boonies. Yeah. <laughs> when they moved from, from McAndrews. So Medford didn't have anything to do with establishing no, it out no. there? Uh -huh. No, that's, that's, county bought that land a long time ago and moved out there. No, that's, we were in the, we're in the Medford city limits. We have to abide by, by Medford uh, rules and regulations. We sit in their city, in city limits, but it's on all county. Well, I have to go pick up my granddaughter. Well, thanks for coming. Kevin, you have anything? Anything you want to shoot at me? Thanks so much. Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming. <laughs> and I must have met you 25 years ago when I went out to Cundling Dale's to look for money. Yeah, I'll see. I'm glad we were out, able to help. I'd like to resume our conversation about economics, uh, being the liaison to the Economic Development Advisory mm -hmm. Committee. Mm -hmm which um, in context I've kind of picked up on the phraseology um, economic uh, development as being tourism, attracting more tourist dollars. So philosophically, um, I've, I've shared kind of the tagline, everything above the ground originally came from below the ground. Mm -hmm. And this is where wealth was created mm -hmm. for America in general to be strong. Specifically Jackson County became very strong through timber industry mining, agriculture, and the natural resources industry is, is suffering badly. And you can look at the indicators. The symptoms would include um, uh, Medford citizens, I think it was like three weeks ago, there was a press release in the Mail Tribune that there's a record number of people who can't even pay their utility bills, which of course, as you would recognize, be the, the first thing that people need to pay to exist. Now, to me, that, that sent up a, a huge red flag that Jackson County residents, not Jackson County government, are in a huge downward spiral, okay? And I think it's important at this point in time of Jackson County's history to distinguish between public sector and private sector to address the very important issues that need to be addressed in order to help the private sector rebound, if that's possible, so that the public sector can be funded by the private sector. You mentioned something, well, the taxpayers pay for that. Guess what? The taxpayers pay for everything. Mm -hmm. The government doesn't pay for anything without, right? Agreed. Okay. What can you as the chair of the Board of Commissioners do to resuscitate and revitalize the private sector economy in this county? Well, that's like asking, if I may, Kevin, if I may draw the example, I'm asking what the President of the United States can do to, to turn the country around from an economic morass uh, over the last eight years. Uh, 
it's it's not an unfair question, but it's a it's a question that that you, there's there's nothing that I or any county commissioner do can flip the switch and uh, all of a sudden do this. So so let me give you and you've heard me say this before. This is going to be old, so it's going to be redundant to you. You can you can do several things. You can you can work from the for, from the uh, from the regulatory side to try to streamline that as much as you possibly can. Okay, to make it as easy, recognizing that we, we are in the Senate Bill 100, we are in the most restrictive land use laws in the United States, right here. So working within that envelope, you can try to, you can try to, to streamline as best you can. I hear complaints from time to time about people unhappy with our, either our planning department or our building department or et cetera, wait too long, filing and all, so on and so forth. I gotta tell you, those people work their rear ends off they are constrained. They have a charge. They have a check sheet. They have to turn in. So anyway, and I'm not saying that there isn't mistakes made. It absolutely happens. But that, so that's one regulatory. Okay. So you want to make sure that you're as we have a policy in Jackson County to be no more restrictive than state laws. When people say, well, big deal. Well, we could be. There are a lot of people that are. Okay. There are cities that are. So that's one. Okay. Another thing we can do. Okay, is is to try to keep the fees somewhat reasonable. Uh, SDCs, community development fees, etc. They're all there. They're all there to raise money. And uh, you weren't at our planning commission, uh, or not planning commission, at our our staff meeting this morning. We had a, a long discussion about taxing marijuana. Okay, I lost a brother and sister to drugs, so I'm not. I'm, I'm very opposed to drugs. But. The discussion was on, and this all has to do with fees. This isn't context, if you'll bear with me. But a commissioner to uh, brought up the deal about, well, boy, we raise the taxes on 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 uh, marijuana. That's going to help us regulate marijuana. It's going to keep people from using marijuana. And I said, no. Look at cigarettes. I mean, what, cigarettes cost like five something a pack, and four dollars. That's Tax. Did it stop people from smoking? Unnecessarily. You know, and I mean, most people see smoking and the folks that shouldn't be, or can't even afford it. Nobody should be smoking, but can at least afford it. This is from an ex smoker. So, so where I'm going with this is, is that I said, let's be honest. I said, there, there's four reasons to tax marijuana. And so, and some, in my opinion, more viable than the others. If there was a direct cost, if, 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 and I'm talking about medical or even recreational marijuana, if there is an additional cost to the county, I'm talking just about county, because this would just be county-wide, because cities are doing their own thing, is that then we should be able to charge enough money to cover those additional costs. Okay, I'll buy that. Number two is because I'm morally opposed to marijuana, period, which I am. But I mean, be honest about it and say, I'm, I'm opposed, so I'm going to tax the hell out of it. Okay. Number three. So are you, are you for taxation of marijuana? No, I'm going to get to, to my, I'm going to get to, I'm going to get, get clear. Okay. Number three is, what is number three? I know I'm on the four. I want to finish with number four. Go ahead and jump to four. Um, <laughs> Come back to three later. Yeah. Number four is, in my belief, is the honest reason to me is because we want more money. That's, I mean, that's really, we want more money. We're, we're a typical government that no matter how much we got, never enough. it's never enough. Because we can always find ways to spend it, you know, as opposed to our own personal budget at home. We can always find ways. And some very meaningful, I mean, I, so, but, but you can always find a way, okay? This whole thing about never enough, um, I'm sure you recognize that every dollar inside county government is a dollar outside where it could be used in the private sector. Not necessarily. I don't think I necessarily agree Well, where else you. does that money come I, I from other than I the don't private think sector? That there are some absolute, absolutely services. I, well, okay, let's listen. Well, let me let me just finish with this. We'll come, you can come back and ask me that question. So, so I was fairly uh, passionate about this. I said, we're going to put a tax on this. Let's be honest about it. We're taxing it because we want money. So you go 10%, 25%, I don't care as much as you can get. 
but let's, let's be honest, don't, let's not put smoke and mirrors, let's not say well, we're doing it because of this and we're doing it because of that. And that that's, because, that's the only reason I'll vote for it. Because I don't, I don't believe it, it has any impact on usage because well, if it's legal, okay, they're just going to, whatever it costs them, it's like any business, their costs go up, their prices go up. What I did for years in, in, uh, in uh, construction materials business, that makes sense to me. Uh, I don't think it's going to keep anybody from it. So, in the end, in the end, uh, is we decided that yes, we would tax marijuana. The other deciding factor for my yes vote was that the cities, looks like all the cities, including Ashland, is finally going to say yes, we're going to tax whether medical marijuana or if recreational, if Measure 91 passes uh, recreational marijuana. So if we say no, we're not going to in the county. But every other city does. Guess where the growers are going? They're coming out into our county. They're coming out in our rural areas. They're already there, quite honestly. But uh, that's one reason coming back to can we help pay for the services? So anyway, the end is that uh, we have to have a look because the way our charter is is that we have to have have old two public meetings on this. But uh, that's the uh, that's where we're going on that. Now, getting back to every dollar out is that dollar in? Okay. Government has a legitimate function. Absolutely has a legitimate function. Public safety being okay. one. Okay. Yeah, public safety. That really was, in my opinion, the founders. That was that was that was the first thing. Is protect our shores. That that was that was number one. And provide for the public welfare as far as roads, transportation, et cetera, et cetera. And then all of a sudden, well, let's tax whiskey because <laughs> it was a great trade. And they were making lots of money. I mean, they had to put an army in the field to quell the whiskey rebellion. But the point being is, is that, is that there are certain service, public health, mental health, the things that we're doing, is just absolutely incredible. Now, in some cases, could the private sector do it better? You know, I mean, that's you have to always you have to weigh you have to weigh that. Could, could the private sector do it better than the public sector? And, and I've been very careful about that. When we get grants or something, can we do it better? So we pass that off to the private sector. You got to weigh that. Just because it says Jackson County Public Health, that doesn't mean Jackson County has to do the work. We may end up just being a conduit to a private site. So there, are, there are there are those there are those functions I believe in government, public safety, administration. Uh, Collecting, collecting taxes, paying for things, uh, is, is absolutely necessary. What you want to look for is waste. And that's where, again, I'm pretty proud of Jackson County and the fact that we have cut our expenses considerably through people. And we've made huge changes in people. And granted, we went through the Great Recession and we haven't needed as many people. But I've seen it in private business, so we don't need them, but we better keep them. Yeah. You know? And then and government's real easy to do. And take a look at school districts. I won't go that. But anyway, so so efficiencies so, have improved. Pardon me. Efficiencies have improved enough to yes. where you need fewer people to All do right, the and same. That kind of comes back yeah. to the question there a little bit about how we all, you know, because because we are actually pretty doggone efficient. Are we perfect? Mm -hmm. No. You mentioned the whiskey rebellion. Uh, have you taken steps to avoid a marijuana rebellion? I mean, because isn't that the same formula? For well, well, I mean, that was a discussion today. That's what's going to happen. I mean, and we're, that's not unique to us. I think uh, all the jurisdictions are worried about that because you're just going to Colorado. I mean, they've made I don't know how many billion dollars since they've been legalized, but they also recognize they've driven more into the black market too because it's a lot cheaper or to the medical marijuana side. Because in, Cal in Colorado, they don't charge anything. There's no tax in Colorado on medical marijuana. Here in Oregon, all the, all the jurisdictions are saying, yeah, we're, we're taxing medicine. We're, we're going to tax all of that. Because that's really what it is. So are we going to take those people and say, screw you. I'm going down here to Fred on the corner. And I'm going to buy my marijuana there because it's going to be cheaper. I don't use the stuff. I hate the stuff. But, I mean, how much money do I got? It makes sense. You said that's what it is. Yeah. Marijuana is medicine yeah. for many people. Um, and I brought up industrial hemp. And yeah, and we have for some reason, something? Commissioner, you go right to marijuana, but no. it should be treated as a separate okay. issue. Okay, we had that discussion today. You be, in fact, I thought about you. Good. When we were talking about it, I was getting, uh, because I read the information that you've given me 
on him. And so I wanted to ask counsel today, okay, now I've read this, et cetera. And, uh, and absolutely, it is in the same genus pool, but it holds and contains no THC. Thank you. So without that, then there's no reason why we shouldn't be able to. I don't understand, though, quite honestly, and I, one of my emails back to you, we do this quite Oh, one of my emails back to you, remember we talked and I said, but it seems like keep shooting some, they keep shooting themselves in the foot because it's this, it's this kind of good, you get this picture, and not just the picture, but of the old 60s where it's party downtime. And, 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 and so if you're trying, if, I, if, I, if I'm in the hemp industry and I'm trying, I'm trying to, to uh, sterilize, that's wrong, but trying to clean up my image, so because I really think there's, Positive uses for it, that, that doesn't seem to be working. So people, you know, I'm just telling you. You're talking about a marketing campaign to overcome a perception. Yeah, well, that's you what know. I'm saying. So people are going to think what they're going to think. Mm -hmm. But if they see leadership take the role and, and decide to do it this way, because they are beyond the public perception, they know what the truth is about it, why couldn't you just say, you know, I understand there's a perception out there, and I'm probably a minority perception at this point in time. Jackson County government's gonna go this way because we believe it's right for Jackson County. Again, everything below the ground is eventually used as raw materials for above the ground for consumption. And, and that's really where the wealth of counties come from in order to approve, in order to um, afford public safety. You look at Josephine County. They've been cut off at the knees with the, the timber industry. And they're dying. They have people that are calling 911 and they're being turned away. And the next morning, there's a headline in the newspaper saying, this horrible thing happened. I you know, disagree. Okay, well, the private sector is, is saying, please let us work the land. So, okay, but the county, see that's it, when I talked about, about uh, our restrictive land use laws. I mean that's the reason we tried to work at the state level through the Association of Oregon Counties because that gives us the most voice as opposed to just Doug Bridenfall going up there, he's an effective lobbyist, but going up there and doing it, right. you have to do it in numbers. And of course obviously you have to increase those numbers when you go back to DC. How effective that is, I'm not positive. You know, but never, but nevertheless, you keep. I say we just keep chipping away. Hopefully, something will change. I don't have a whole bunch of positive thoughts, that, and I'm thinking about the timber industry and, and such. So, but you still have to keep doing it. You don't just throw up your hands and walk away because that's quite honestly what the environmentalists. And when I say environmental, I'm an environmentalist in a way, but I'm not. I'm not extremist. I mean, I, I've lived in this valley for 60 years now. 60 years exactly this year, and I like this valley. But I got to tell you, <clears throat> this valley is a much cleaner valley it was than when I first moved here. And in the summer times, it would be so bad here you couldn't see the hills. In July and August, early September, because of the inversion factor. I mean, we got that climatic situation, which they said is even worse than Long Beach. That was a report of several years ago. But because there were so little, few restrictions on, on uh, emissions, and mainly coming from wood stoves, uh, the old style wood stoves, and from the mills. Mm -hmm. Now the mills spent several millions of dollars cleaning themselves up. We don't have the wood stoves, or very few of those, and they did something on the, on the, on the automobile in certain areas. But this is a different area. If you've lived here any time at all, this is a different valley from an area shed situation than it was 60, 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, so there's, there's, so when I say I'm an environmentalist, that's what I mean. There are certain things that, that really need to be done and need to make sure that, but, but setting a lot of huge swaths of, of, of land, so some hiker, some young man or woman at 18 or 23 or 35, that's in a 10 times better shape than I am, can take, some land needs to be set aside for wilderness, but that doesn't mean hundreds of square miles, thousands of square miles. I don't believe in that. I think that's wrong. Right. And back to industrial hemp, can you put a bow on the package and, and really come out with your personal opinion regardless of 
this public perception of well, I'd have to talk to somebody who's in the hemp business. You haven't yet. I mean, I've encouraged you to go to dispensaries and talk about the CBD, the cannabinoid content versus okay, the THC. I, I, I think I've read almost every one of I don't know. I don't know if you've ever given me a specific place to go. Oh, well. I'm seriously. Okay, I'll send it again. But that, that was my encouragement is to talk, you know, technical specifications with the people who know it best. So, so if we're talking about a resource-based economy, mm -hmm. is there any any uh, good news as far as for, forest use when heading down the road? Gonna gonna have any access to our timber better than we have now, or is that gonna be pretty much choked off over the future? You know, I honest opinion, Don Scunder's opinion. I don't think we're going anywhere. There have, with, with that said, there seems to be more movement, at least a lot more chatter on both sides of the issue than there has been in a long time. There used to be a lot of yelling on both sides, but as far as conversation or at least discussion, uh, there was very little. This is my position, this is my position, and never the two shall meet. Two major legislations, one out of the Senate, uh, out of uh, Senator Wyden's side, and then the one out of the House. Uh, those are two entirely different uh, solutions. Uh, I don't think that those could, I mean, there's that case where they're not yelling at each other, they're saying, no, it isn't going to happen, so you might as well try to do something else. Somehow, they have to come into some sort of compromise. I don't think the, the, the plan on, on the on the Walden Schrader DeFazio as far as dividing up the property, I mean what I'm gonna call it property, fifty percent being timber producing property and fifty percent side. I don't think that's ever gonna happen. I don't see the federal government ever said ever saying that, period. I'm not saying they shouldn't, but I'm just saying I don't ever see that. Uh, on the other hand, I don't think the House is ever gonna give up the point of, of, of saying, well then, okay, if that's not, if that's not the solution, then what is? Because we have rural America, in Oregon especially, that are suffering. So, if, instead of just saying no, give us an alternative. Well, the senator said, well, here's the alternative. We'll do some, we'll, we'll do some um, um, clear cut, not clear cutting. Um, um, Selective select, select, select cutting. Uh, and such, and we'll do this little, and we'll have a we'll have a little timber sale here. We'll have, well, that's kind of what they're doing now, and uh, that that can talk to the you talk to the timber products, uh, Boise Cascades, Murphy Lumber, Swanson Lumber, Rogue Forest Products. That's not a way to run a business. Like, you can't do that. So um, now, little victory up there in, at, uh, in Cave Junction uh, right. with uh, with. Uh, Rough and ready there, but that's all subsidized. They would never have been able to do that if the state had to give them X amount of dollars because they're, I mean, they, they completely refitted their mill to work on small diameter logs. Well, they can do that now because they got money from, from the state. But when it has to stand on its own two feet, I don't see it happening. I think it's all it did is just it put 60 people back to work out of the 100 that were laid off for a couple, three years, but I think it's just kicking a can down the road. That's my opinion. Okay. So, the honest answer, uh, I hate to be a pessimist, but I, but, so what, what are no, we? No, good, good, good answer. So my next question, which I think you already know, I, I think you have a response to this is, since, and I think I agree with you, so since we agree and recognize that a resource-based economy is, is a lot more in the past than it is in the future, what are we gonna do to employ these kids that we spend $11,000 a year educating when they get out of high school and realize that they live in a place that has the worst ratio of wages to house prices in the United States? That's very, uh, that's a, a timely question. Uh, and working really hard with, uh, with uh, the, uh, the uh, Rural Workforce Partnership and with the Job Council, which are one of the same kind of. Uh, and with with the economic folks like so ready saying that 
So it's a chicken and the egg sort of situation, <clears throat> quite honestly. You can train the workforce for <clears throat> high tech jobs, if you will, or high mechanical jobs, or high trade jobs, but if there's no work for them, they're not staying. And the people like RCC and such can't afford to build their, their infrastructure up to train those kids to go off somewhere they just can't afford them and they haven't got enough volume. So that's one part of the chicken or the egg. The other part of the chicken and the egg is the business over here says, you know, we kind of like Southern Oregon. This is kind of a nice place. Uh, yeah, your land use laws are a little goofy, uh, but, you know, we kind of like it here. So uh, we're going to hire 500 people. Well, let's just say we're going to hire 200 people. And these are the skills you've got to have. Hmm. Well, we don't have any of those right now. So that owner says either one or two things, says us, adios, I can't, you know, I can't. Or they may say, well, you know, I tell you what, I can bring up, if we're talking people relocating out of California, for example, I can bring up, it's going to cost me a lot of money, but I really like this, so I can bring up uh, my key people, key group of people, and then we can kind of hire and we can train. I mean, they really want to work with us, and this has happened. But then their key people say, they come up here, oh, this is beautiful. I can, most of them are young. I can ride my, my trail bike on here. I, I can hang glide off wood rat. I can be on the road the coast. I can go up north and go Windsor. I can, what a wonderful place this is. But you know, if it doesn't work out here, where do I go to work? See, I don't go, like if you go to, to, to Washington County, for example, and you work for Intel, it doesn't work for you there, and you just go right across the street to Google. If it doesn't work there, then you go over here to Amazon. And those are all businesses in Portland now. I mean, so they're not headquartered there except for Nike. Okay, so but, so that's a big deal. So you think, you know, you, you think about your kids, think about, that's the reason my one boy lives in New York and one lives in L.A. When they came out of high school, when they came out of college, there wasn't the kind of work here that they needed. So so what do you do? Do you do you, do you, do you build the workforce, which, which like I said, which is working on and, and, and working with Rogue Community College and gave them some money to try to, to, to gear up specifically for industrial workers. It's a new uh, euphemism now for, it used to be mill rights, but now they're called industrial workers. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm always wrong, mill right, but nevertheless. So you do that and you try to, or do you say, come on up and we'll give you so many incentives that will be worth your while to do kind of an OJT sort of deal and do that. So it's, it's, it's difficult and that gets right. I mean, it's your question as well, uh, Kevin, about uh, do, what, what, what can government do? And that's the, the fence that I personally am walking and we as a board of commissioners, uh, are, what, what, what can we do as a government to encourage that? We tried the job grant program here a couple, three years ago. I got vilified for that a bit. Uh, I thought it was a, a decent idea. It was, Public money, we spent a couple hundred thousand dollars over two years doing that. It helped a few businesses, but certainly didn't turn us around by any stretch. And then when we, the, uh, the, uh, the budget committee, uh, they didn't like the way that money's being spent, so that was one voice, but nevertheless. The answer to your question though, and I actually do believe this, and I'm gonna be a lot more optimistic on this side of the question than, than on the one you asked me about uh, before Forest Timber is that we have a surprising underground of small manufacturers in the valley, tech businesses as well, e-commerce as well, Motorcycle USA is a flagship of that group, or Harry David, but Harry David's been here forever. But Motorcycle USA started in his grandfather's attic in Eagle Point. We have some of those entrepreneurs here, we have people that, that now the biggest issue they face is capital. So that's where the angel network helps, you know, uh, uh, trying to provide uh, equity capital and such. But I, I, I'm very encouraged with it. The small electronics, small machine shops, I'm talking anywhere from five to 25 employees. And they're all off the radar screen. Hardly anybody, unless you're involved as a vendor or something in that, you don't even know they exist. And they exist all the way from Cave Junctions, 
uh, through Merlin and the, out of Josephine County, down through White City, through Med to Ashland. Uh, and so I think that's where we have to go. Quite honestly, I think we have to put the money in education. How you talk about how many through high school? That's a, a whole deal. The county has nothing to do with. I don't think we're training our kids the way we should be, but they've tried all kinds of things. I don't know the answer to that. My wife's a past educator, as you well know. I don't know the answer there. I, I really don't. I, public school, private school, that's really scary. I mean, it's because most kids don't take math classes because they don't see the relevance of it. Commissioner. I'm not going to be a mathematician. I'm not going to be a scientist. That's all I'm going to go out and lose my hand. They don't realize that they may use Algebra 1 on a daily basis, but they don't, they don't know that. They haven't, for some reason, our education hasn't that hasn't trans translated itself as I'm a teacher and I'm a passionate about history. That's what I was going to be was a history teacher when I went to college. That was my original idea because I'm passionate about history. So, and it makes me teach easier because I've tried to build that, even when history is pretty boring for if you don't like it. My point being is if we could get, and I'm going to pick on math teachers, we could get show, they may be passionate about math, about the theory of math and how it works and the mechanics of mathematics. But as far as translating to that, boy, boy, if you do this, you're going to use this no matter what, what vocation you go into. So the kids kind of get, hey, this is kind of cool. I could get it. So anyway, that's my own personal soapbox. Back to I didn't answer your question, but that's why I feel. Back to economic development, and I appreciate all the work that you've put into economic development in Jackson County. And I use the bunny ears because I, I really am picking up on this whole tourism focus. Um, and I've heard, I've heard what I've recognized as well as, is the missing link between um, the employer and the employees. There seems to be a missing link where Jackson County has to tell the prospective employers that want to come into Jackson County, a beautiful place, well, aren't there people that already know how to do most of the jobs that they're looking for? There will be a little bit of OJT, but is there a clearinghouse of resumes of people who love this area enough to move here, how do they get recognized as potential employees? Can Jackson County government provide that clearinghouse service to complete that bridge between the employers and employees? Well, I don't think we are the vehicle for that. However, I believe that we are the vehicle from a facilitation standpoint, and that's something I've tried to work on uh, you hear a little bit of that discussion when you were up there at, uh, at the retreat up there. Uh, we are still in, in, we have too many silos still right. uh, within the county. Like I said the other day, we have nine incorporated cities in a, in a, in a, with a population of 208,000. That's funny because we all have our own little Phoenix is Phoenix and White City is White City. And, Ashland's Ashland, Butte Falls, Butte Falls. Isn't that why Jackson uh, County government but, can provide that? But that's that's what we're trying to do. But it's yes. very very hard because you got to break that down. It's very, I mean, because I'm Central Point, and I'm just picking on them. I'm Central Point. This is this is me. This is what I want to be. This is what I'm looking at. Okay, I'm Ashland. Well, we know Ashland is Ashland. Most okay. people don't work in the same zip code where they live, so yeah, there, see, there has to be a bridge built between. Well, that's these that's perspectives. My one regret there. about leaving after only four years because that's what I was working. I mean, we've made a few inroads. At least we talk to one another now. We didn't used to even talk to each other. Yeah. Uh, in fact, if any conversation or any interaction was uh, mostly uh, 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 derogatory. So I, I, I'm, I'm proud of that fact. At least we talk to one another. So I've got a quote on my wall. I'm a quote guy because I'm, I'm not smart enough to have any original thoughts, but I, I'd love to copy others, but I'll give them full credit. Uh, and it says, uh, it says, this is, by, this is by Henry Ford. And if you know anything about his history, it's kind of interesting that he would do this because he wasn't the most perfect man in the world by any stretch. But he says, uh, coming together is the beginning. Uh, working together, let's do this up. Working together is progress. Solving problems. The thing was, I'm sorry, I don't remember the chat. The thing is, okay, it's good. I got somebody to come go. Good for you. Number two, well, they're kind of talking to one another. Okay, that's good. But come, so they're actually working together for a result, outcomes. That's success. Remember, that's the last part. That's success. Well, 
I think we're in stage two now. Not if prospective Fairly employees well. are not well. Being I'm talking about I'm talking about entities now. I'm yeah. talking about whether they be public enemy entities like cities, jurisdictions, or like so ready or sustainable. I think at least we're talking. I think we're talking together. We haven't because we haven't got over here because that's Rural River, or that's Gold Hill, or that's Medford, you know. And so instead of saying this is this is Rural Valley, and I understand. I mean, I understand the individual. I mean. There are different needs for different cities, and I understand that, and I, and I respect that. But ultimately, I believe in the old high tide floats all the boats. So that's what I try to work on. Anything else? I, I, I don't have any more questions. I've got some comments. Comments? Yeah. No. Go ahead. Yeah. I, I think. Me and a lot of people like me are uh, not happy that you decided not to run me. And uh, we think you did a great job. We, we thought that you and John and Doug made a good team. We liked the idea of running the county like a business. We, we thought that was a really kind of a common sense approach, and you guys pulled it off pretty darn good. And uh, we kind of hoped that that would continue. Well, I appreciate that, but I was up front. I knew, I knew right up front that I was only going to be able to only able to. Uh, I had made a promise to my wife when I was asked to run. And we were, that was, I'd already retired twice and, and uh, we had never spent any really good, well, we've had, we've had great times together, but not any time when I haven't had to be somewhere or something. And so, anyway. And well, I have regrets about that. Well, I, I appreciate all, the, all these town hall. I, I really don't know of another, not in my remembrance, I can't remember another county commission in all these town halls. You're the only one I can remember that's ever done So this. I, I've got to tell you, I have told all the candidates that have come into my office that I would hope that uh, that they, someone uh, would, would do this, somebody would go to city council. It's, it's very gratifying to me, I'll be honest, from an ego standpoint. When I go to a city council meeting, it was at Eagle Point last night, Tuesday night. Uh, and, uh, and almost every one of them are very gracious when I go to them. They recognize and say, nice to have you, Commissioner. And now I've gone so many times, I don't know how many times uh, I've done that, in, in, in several scores. But, but uh, the comment, when I first started going, gee, we've never seen a county commissioner before. Seriously, you know, that we've never seen anybody. And, and if, if you've been to any that I've been to, I don't go to make a presentation unless it was over the libraries or something like that, but I just go to listen. You know? So then when I come back, I report on that. So I just, I, and, I, and I've shared that, like say, with the candidates uh, that, who have come in and talked to me. Uh, not all of them have, but uh, I would hope that somebody would, because I think the groundwork's been laid, and, uh, uh, and hopefully somebody will take that up. Do you think Commissioner Pryantal will pick up the ball and run with it? He might. He might. Doug likes being out in the front. I, I don't do this because I like being out in the front. And that's, I mean, that's an honest statement. Uh, I do this because I think it's something should be done. Uh, I'm not good at small talk. I'm not good at, they recognize all my, my shortcomings. But, but Doug does like, he does like to be out in front. And I'm not saying that that is a negative or positive. By the way, he just does. Uh, he's going to, he's enjoying being county commissioner. I enjoy being county commissioner, but he really enjoys it. So it's something I see him doing for a long time, as long as he gets reelected. Uh, and with the with whomever gets uh, elected in one and three, I don't. You know, I really think eight years is right. I think two terms is just the right amount of time. Because I tell you what, even in my four years, it's easy to get sucked in. You have to really watch yourself, because pretty soon, well, gee, that's kind of the way we do it. You know, and you got to be very careful whether it's the administrator or a department head or something, you know, or, you know, you know the easiest thing to hide from, well, that's law. It says so in the statute. And so I have counseled, uh, again, the few people that have come here and talked to me, always ask why. And not that, I'm not saying there has been any uh, deceptions being done, it's just you need to know yourself and not just go, and it's real easy to fall into that trap. Oh, okay, sign my name. I think that's one reason I ran against Jack, 
he'd been in, the, in office for 16 years, and I, we agreed on a lot of things, but we disagreed on a few of things, and I just thought 16 years for an elected official is, is too long. I, I just think you do become part of the system. And uh, I don't, so, but eight years is about right. You get the first four years, you really get your things under your, you know, your feet underneath you, and then you can maybe be a little more effective, huh. you know, after that. Would you I get asked why I still go to city council meetings and even though I knew I wasn't running for re-elections because it's part of the job as far as I'm concerned. Would you offer any mentorship to the one or Absolutely. two of the new candidates? Nobody's asked me. <laughs> <laughs> First time. <laughs> so, uh, actually I'll tell you what, and then we got we close yep. up here, but uh, I, I mean this is where we live. This is, like I said, I've lived here for 61 years. My wife's lived here for here in 63, so she's uh, so 50 years that she's lived here. Um, That's where we live, this is where we raised our kids, even though our kids aren't here. Um, so I would hope to come back and be of some sort of some sort of service somehow, a mentor, mentor or whatever. Uh, we're going to take a little trip on, uh, after the first of the year in the motorhome for a, a few months, but other than that, I'll come back. I, I, I should suggest a couple things for you to work on after you've caught your breath a little bit. You know, and, what, and it's really it's the same thing that you've already been working on, with, which is common sense financial practices and, and flexibility. And any business has to be flexible to survive. And one of the things that you, that you struggle with is that you were, if I, if I remember right, 80% of your budget, 80% of the entire county budget was wage, wages and salaries, if I remember right. You know, I don't have that number, but I, it wouldn't surprise but me. Those, I mean, that's that's what government is, mainly yeah, is bodies. Yeah, it's not very much, and very little equipment. Ninety percent of your employees are under representation. I remember right. We have six hundred. We have six hundred and some employees. Six just in the low six six or six ten or something like that. From a high of a thousand. So so you don't have the in, in the county. You don't have the flexibility that a private businessman has. For instance, when you're on the private side, if you have a lot of business, you go out and hire more employees. If you had slow business, you could let employees go so that you could balance your payroll according to the demands of your business. You can't do that when you're counting when you're when you're so it's tough. You can do it, it but, but it's very tough. And it's not it's not a responsive process. It's something that you, you have to deal with the budget cycles and you have to deal with the representation. It's, it's very cumbersome. So one of the one of the things would be you know working on, on flexible scalability by you know, maybe more private, and I know that you've done a fair amount of private contracting already, but that would be, you know, that would just be a wonderful, wonderful thing to, to build on the work that you've already done, is uh, giving yeah. the county the ability to be more scalable and more flexible. We have done quite a bit of, you know, you have? That. we have done quite a bit of, of private contracting now, uh, because in some cases the private side does it a lot better than the government side, you uh, know. But, uh, what a concept. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not always, sometimes. We force, I, I tell you, when I first came on board, the, the, our roads department, those people were not up in arms, but they were very anxious because here's this guy, this executive from Knife River, going to come in and the first thing he's going to do is going to privatize a home we're all out of a job. So I got in front of him and I spoke to him uh, just within the first three months after taking office. And I told him, that's not my intent. And I'm only one of three. But I got to tell you that I can speak for my other new county commissioner, who was out of the private side. And we expect our employees to be as efficient or more efficient than the private side. If, you're not, if not, it's our responsibility to kind of the taxpayers in Jackson County to get it done the best way. The best way, the best value, lowest cost, greatest greatest return. So you know, sometimes, but it's got to work the value. Got to work the outcome is the important thing. And I was real honest with him. So I said, uh, you know, guys and gals, you got to perform. <laughs> it's just as simple as that. I'm not here after your job. I'm just making sure you, that your job's. Here. And then I spoke to him two or three times. I just spoke to him again here um, about four months ago. And uh, I was really pleased. I had a lot of folks come up, and uh, we cut that section down quite a bit. Not because we outsource a whole bunch of it, it's because we just have the money to do it. That's one, the roads department is funded completely out of the road fund, 
which is entirely, we have, that doesn't come from our taxes, it comes, it comes from our taxes, but not our county taxes. And that's dedicated dollars. It comes from the federal government and the state, part of the old timber payment thing. Uh, but, uh, and I had several people come up and we really appreciated that, that uh, we felt much better. We knew it was just better keep our uh, head down or butt up. So, anyway. Thanks for coming. I appreciate you guys coming.